Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Jake Smash. This is going to be a Watcher of Realms video. It is 1148, Sunday, February the 25th, and it is finally time we're going to talk the Boreas nerf. While we're chit-chatting about this, a uh, very one-sided chit-chat, let's set up some Gear Raid 1 auto battles. Oh, I have no, I have no energy. Let's, uh, let's set some up so that we can talk. So we can watch Boreas soloing Gear Raid 1. Oh man, so Boreas has been out for a couple months now. Uh, he, has, he is incredibly strong, right? Uh, everyone knows this. He is exceptional for both PvE and PvP content. He has a wicked range. He hits for crazy damage. Um, man, he's just really, really, really good. So... A few weeks ago, Moonton didn't announce, but it was found in the code, right, that he he was going into a, a different rarity tier when summoning legendaries, right? So there would be a lower chance to pull him, making him more rare to get him in the future. That was something um, a lot of people weren't happy with it, mostly because there was no public announcement, but... I think most people kind of agreed that it made sense that, you know, he was ridiculously strong and it made sense to try to limit the number of him in circulation. Um, and now, Moonton has announced that there is a massive nerf incoming, kind of, with an asterisk, right? They announced no notice that there was going to be a big nerf, but it's on the Forerunner server. And a lot of people made a big deal about it. And uh, and they they walked it back just a little bit and said, okay, well, this is this is on the Forerunner server for testing purposes. Uh, we're open to feedback. Tell us what you think should happen, community. Tell us, do you think these nerfs are appropriate? Do you think they're not? Do you think there should be more? Do you think there should be less? Um, give us feedback. We're willing to listen to feedback. So the biggest problem here is that he's he's basically basically getting nerfed into the ground in that every single part of his kit almost every part almost every part of his kit is getting nerfed i'm not going to go over the entire kit changes here in this video that's not the point of this um plenty of other content creators have a step-by-step -step breakdown uh, if you're looking for that. But almost every single part of his kit is getting nerfed. The The only real exception to that is uh, his ult cost is lowering. Uh, so you'll be able to ult more often, basically. But damage is going down across the board. Uh, freezing duration is going down. Range is going down. Everything is getting nerfed, right? So it's a really, really big nerf. He's still going to be very useful. People are already testing him out on the test server. Um, Ronaldo plays. I'll link to his video in the pinned comment below. He's got a good video out showing that he's still he's still very strong. He's still uh, you know pretty close to Comet tier strength. So he's still a very good champ. He still puts out good damage. He still does put out freezes. He still does put out anti healing. He still does do all of these things, and he is still good. He's just not as crazy good as he was. At least that's current nerf iteration, right? That they're willing to adjust. So the big question, right, is, 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 is this the right call? Does a nerf need to happen? And if a nerf does need to happen, should it be this intense of a nerf? Uh, and that's and that's tough to answer for a lot of reasons because no matter what you have people on both sides of the fence you have uh, people that spent a lot of real world money trying to get this guy there's people that spent thousands of dollars going after Boreas and there's understandably a lot of people that don't have him that are very frustrated by the fact that uh, it is very difficult for them to compete in arena and it is uh, seemingly unfair right that someone who happens to pull this one champ can magically progress to end game gear raid content you know in 
a fraction of the time that it takes every single other player that doesn't happen to pull this one champ because he is so strong in all content. This isn't even a good example of him because Dolores died. I'm going to restart it because why not? We're talking, right? So, um, man, it's tough. What do you do, right? So I don't know the answer. Uh, I don't know everything. I'll keep that one. Um, I've never developed a game that has been played by millions of people. I've said that before, right? But uh, what I like to do, what I was trained to do in my job when providing a suggestion is, is you provide three COAs, courses of actions. You provide three options for the boss. You explain, you know, kind of the major pros and cons of all of them, and then you suggest one of those three courses of action that you think is the most suitable. And then, of course, it's the boss's decision uh, who actually, you know, what they're going to do. So so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to provide three options for Moonton, assuming you listen, and uh, I'll give my kind of advice and what I think from folks that I've talked to, and, and you choose what you're going to do, right? So... So the first option that I'll present, the first koa, is to leave him as he is. Don't touch him. He's he's busted good. Super overpowered. Uh, arguably the best champ in the game overall, right? Um, it's hardly an argument because he's so strong in virtually all content. Um, leave him as he is. Okay? The, the biggest pro to this is that... Um, Everyone who has him is is very, very happy that they get to keep using him like they have. And especially the people that spent lots of money trying to get him um, and the people that spent lots of money trying to get him and didn't get him, right? Those kind of camps, the big spenders, they're you know more likely to continue spending in the future on this game because uh, they, they won't feel disenfranchised by wasting their hard-earned real-world money on a game where um, you know they can't trust the developer to leave them like like uh, like they were when they chose to spend money on them okay so um, that's that's the biggest pro is you're gonna have uh, a bunch of happy people one particular camp brings in a lot of money for the company okay the biggest con to leaving him as he is is that we get into the conversation of power creep for the game and what that looks like and how power creep affects the long-term health of the game. Power creep is good for a game. It arguably has to happen over time in order to keep things interesting and to keep the game fun and exciting and enjoyable and to be able to learn how to push new content and to release new content, right? Power creep is a good thing, but when one champion does so is is completely in a league of their own, you go from power creep to power leap, as I heard one person refer to it. And that is bad for the long-term health of the game because when releasing future content you you have to keep that particular champion in mind both when we're talking about new content as far as stuff for the player base to do in the game right um so new content has to uh consider this really strong overpowered boreas um, otherwise, it'll it'll be no challenge for you know everyone who has him and the people that will have him will continue to rise over time, right? So there's no there's no enjoyment there in pressing new content because it's it's same old same old. So you have to make it difficult with them in mind, and what that does is uh, it it widens the gap between the haves and the have-nots, right? Just because you make it difficult with uh, a, a particularly strong champion in mind, um, it makes it difficult to design a way for it to not still be incredibly difficult for everyone that doesn't have him and, and bridge that gap even further, right? So the other way that you have to consider it with regard to power creep is future champions, right? Because you have to essentially over time normalize his level of power it means that everyone that was released before him right everyone that's in the game 
they become less and less useful overall, right? Not completely. Um, and everyone that is released in the future needs to be more powerful at an accelerated rate, right? So all of that to say that it shortens the lifespan of the game because you have to create characters and you have to create content much faster that is able to compete with this powerful champ. So um, it makes it makes the game's shelf life shorter at the end of the day, which is which is a bad thing. I think we can all agree, right? Both from the company's perspective, um, a development standpoint, a financial standpoint, right? They want the game to be successful for as long as possible. The player base who enjoys playing the game wants to continue playing the game, and they want it to be successful for as long as possible. Um, so that's a that's a pretty bad con. So that's co number one. Leave Messier is super stupid, broken, powerful. All right. Co number two, leave the nerf as it is on the Forerunner server, right? At press with that for global. Um, pros and cons for that. Uh, the biggest con there is that you will really, really, really anger uh, the, the big spenders in the community. You can always attract new ones, right? Um, that's part of the game. That's part of it existing for a long time, uh, cycling through big spenders. But you know, you want to keep them from a again from a company financial standpoint. You want them to be playing the game and in, enjoying playing the game and be willing to spend their real world money for as long as possible um, for the for the success of the company, right? So if you nerf him, arguably into the ground, right? Even though he'll still be really good. That's going to anger a lot of people that have spent a lot of money and a lot of them um, will likely just, you know, abandon the game, right? So so you're going to lose money. You're very likely to lose money if you press with the nerf as it is currently written on the Forerunner server. Uh, and the, the biggest pro to it is that uh, the exact opposite of the con from leaving as he is as powerful, right, is you extend the game's shelf life, right, which is, which is very, very important. We want the game to be successful. The company wants the game to be successful. The player base wants the company to be successful. And if you bring him down, how he is currently written, He'll still be powerful. He just won't be, oh my God, insane powerful, right? So he'll still be good. He will still need to be power crept, but you can afford, from a game design standpoint, you can afford to power creep him at a slower pace. So that's a good thing. It extends the shelf life of the game. That's the biggest prawn. pro to that situation. And then the third koa is... Um, somewhere in the middle, right? Find a middle ground. Identify through your, um, you know, internal processes, what's the biggest reason that you are considering the nerf, right? If you are considering the nerf just to satiate a vocal portion of the community right now, that's not a good enough reason, okay? Period, dot. It's not because that sets a precedent for the future. And while player and community feedback is important, it's not everything. At the end of the day, there has to be a certain level of trust on both sides for the people that have you know, the schooling and the experience and the training and the education um, to, to develop the game in law in line with a strategic vision that a player base may not notice because they're very focused on what is happening right in front of them okay so um if you're doing it just to satiate you know a very vocal portion of the population that said to nerf him that's not a good enough reason there has to be a strategic justification okay so if there is a strategic justification, getting back to the middle ground, what is that strategic justification f as far as the game health? Is it because it, it is, uh, is it more for PVE content or PVP content? Okay. And then whichever one it is, potentially it's both, right? Um, identify specifically, uh, through internal analysis, right? The, the, 
what it is about his capability in PVE or PVP content that you want it adjusted for and why, right? So is it the fact that he has a mind-boggling range? Um, uh, maybe just do that. Um, drop his range from four and a half tiles down to, you know, three tiles for his big explosion. Is, is that it? You're good with his damage, but the fact that he can wipe the map is the problem? Drop his range. Is it the fact that his, his damage is mind-boggling, right? Um, Lower his multipliers on, on a couple things, but don't nerf every single part of his kit. Is it the fact that it's just um, extremely limiting and frustrating in Arena PvP, which... PvP needs a lot of work. So the fact that most people already aren't happy with PvP and this just makes it worse for most people, um, is that the biggest problem? If so, increase his cost in Arena. Give him an exclusive passive that unlike you know Chaotic where it lowers their cost in Arena, for him, it increases it. Just give him a passive. Increase his cost by, I don't know, eight in Arena. Something like that. Um, and then that way he can still, you know, if you happen to pull him, you can still use him for progression, but it keeps PvP much, much safer, okay? So so identify what the strategic re reason is and then um, go down that rabbit hole, okay? Um, the, the biggest pro to this is that you'll satisfy the majority of people, honestly. Most of the player base, right, falls in the middle. Most of the player base isn't your um, super vocal types. Most of the player base isn't your big spenders. Most of the player base isn't your, um, you know, big complainers. Um, most of the player base is uh, mostly trusting with the game and the developers. Most of the player base um, feels more or less indifferent to the situation, right? Um, so if you if you do something in the middle, right, where you acknowledge that, yes, he's very, very strong, but we're going to limit him a little bit, um, most people can agree that he is very, very strong, and he should be limited a little bit for the game health. Now, what that limitation looks like, right, that is completely up for debate. Um, but most people can agree biases aside, whether you have spent money or haven't spent money, or you do have him or you don't have him, that he is very, 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 very strong. And an adjustment in some way would be healthy for the game, okay? So you would make the majority of the player base happy with a middle ground. The biggest downside to a middle ground is that without the big nerf bringing him down to um, essentially a, a top tier mage, right? Because current nerf plans still have him top tier. If you don't bring him all the way down, then he will still be overpowered overall, which gets back to power creep versus power leap. Okay? So if you limit him in one arena versus the other, PvP versus PvE, then that still brings into the conversation how do you tackle uh, effective power creep over time in that specific content while maintaining the health and integrity of the long-term trajectory of the game, okay? So there's still big problems to solve there if you go with a middle ground, even though the majority of the community would be happy with a middle ground, okay? So those are those are the big three COAs that I would push. Um, massive nerf, leave him as he is, super broken, and find a middle ground. Now... The one that I would suggest, I, I'm personally, I try to always consider the long-term picture, okay? Um, I I have Boreas, obviously. I love him. Every time I do a takeover, I am so happy when he's on the account because it just makes my job way easier. But um, I am a... Uh, uh, I, I prefer to consider the the big picture more than what's in front of my face. It's what I've been what I've been trained to do over the years. And so if I'm considering the bigger picture, then regardless of who gets mad, the bigger picture is the health of the game. Okay? And so if the health of the game is what is most important and we would rather the game be healthy for, you know, 
five, six, seven, eight years versus two, three, or four years, then I think the right answer for the health of the game is to is to go with the nerf as it's uh, currently planned on the forerunner. He'll still be really good. You're going to make some people really mad, but I think doing what's best for the game is the right answer. Um, now, that will not be an acceptable answer every time. That does not, even if you choose to do that, the you cannot set the precedent of release a super broken overpowered champion, let people spend thousands and thousands of dollars, and then nerf him on the back end. That will not be a sustainable business model. You have to actually um, release champions as you intend to release them, which means you have to do better testing up front before you release them to the global server. Now, the way to do that is to use the test server, okay? The Forerunner server is a thing. There's lots of people that are on it, and I'm not talking trash about the Forerunner server or anyone that plays it, okay? But here's the problem. People that are on the Forerunner server, most of them do not consider it their responsibility to be test dummies. Um, they just don't. Some of them do. Some of them appreciate giving feedback and, and being able to do that. But most of them do not consider it their responsibility. So if you're relying on Forerunner data as a, a testing and analysis candidate, it will not be as good as utilizing the test server where you can have people whose purpose, not, not purpose, right? But you have content creators, specific content creators that have access to the test server and they can go in and test these champs in various situations under the premise of providing feedback to the community and the company in case an adjustment is needed in the future, okay? So you have to release champs on the test server a couple weeks before you release them to global to give content creators adequate time to test them in different situations to tell if they're busted or not because they will tell you very quickly. Um, so no matter what, you have to do that. You have to use the test server to test champs. And even then, things are going to slip through the cracks. But if something slips through the cracks, it will be much smaller and it will be able to, ha be, able to be handled much quicker okay so this was a long one it was kind of rambly um, if you stuck with me the whole time I appreciate it just a quick recap right here are my my three suggested courses of action for Moonton in this situation right leave Boreas as he is stupid powerful everyone who has him is going to be happy everyone who doesn't have him is going to be a little upset um, and you're going to have to power leap the heck out of this game you will have to accelerate content um which shortens the game life okay leave the nerf as it is written on the forerunner server you're going to disenfranchise a lot of big spenders who will need to be released replaced over time but realistically that'll probably happen organically anyways um but but your numbers will probably go down in the short term okay and you'll make uh, a vocal portion of the population very, very happy with that nerf, the folks who don't have him and the folks that are super frustrated facing him in arena. Third one, find a middle ground. Identify through internal analysis, right, where he is most overpowered that affects your long-term strategic vision for the community and adjust specifically for that um, content versus nerfing almost everything in his kit, okay? Um, uh, that'll satisfy the majority, but you're still going to get into a power creep versus leap conversation in the specific content that he's left really powerful for. Okay. So um, all of those have pros and cons. I suggest nerfing him as it is written on the forerunner. I know a lot of people won't agree with that. Um, but I think for the long-term health of the game, that's, that's the best scenario to to help the game game survive longer, um, that's that's my thoughts. So, um, 
Yeah, that's that's really all I have. I, I thank you so much for your time. Anyone who watched this, especially if anyone at Moon Time is watching it, uh, please support the channel if you appreciate my, my perspective and how I cover things. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, share it with your friends. Uh, let's, let's make sure people keep talking about this, though. Okay, let's keep talking about it. Keep bringing up options. Moonton has said they're open to feedback, and I truly believe that they are. I would just caution Moonton um, to be selective of feedback because at the end of the day, they have the responsibility for ensuring the health of, of the game. Okay, so thank you so much for your time. Um, I will see you in the next one.